and not that it's a big deal, but we have learned like this whole last several days has been algebraic stuff. We did properties that first day. So the constant multiple, the scalar multiple, we did the sum, difference, product, and quotient. Yep. Those are all properties. Algebraic properties. And then the stuff we're working on now uses those, but we kind of switched the wording to algebraic manipulation. So this is like factoring and canceling um, and rationalizing fraction manipulation, that kind of stuff. Okay, so 23. Well, so in this one, first of all, you don't use it in this, but I do want you to remember, do you guys remember the property? And we could write this somewhere, but sine squared plus cosine squared is what? Uh, one. one, yeah. Uh, you, you can use that in some like this uh, if you want. Sometimes it works. Uh, but this is also the difference of squares. You can see if that see it as that. So let's do it that way. Yeah, or you can. <coughs> well, let me finish writing this. Okay. And then say your thing again. Oh, I just pulled the one out. I did some preference. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's okay either way. All right, so here's the thing. We have those two properties with cosine of x. And they were both with subtraction. So 1 minus, and co 1 minus cosine and cosine minus 1 were both um, 0. So it kind of looks weird, but if we split this like that, just for visual, we can see two of our properties coming out. Come on, color. So that one and that one are both a known property. So 1 minus cosine x over x, as x approaches 0, is 0. And then we have this 1 plus cosine of x, or cosine of 0, if we want to put that in there. And then sine of x over x is 1. Well, this whole thing, because of that 0, becomes 0. It's, it really is, the, that word manipulation really does describe this. Like we are really just wrangling stuff around to try to cancel it out. Any other questions on that stuff? You did say you, you checked as well? Yeah, I don't know, I just, I didn't try 23, I don't know if it's just a credit, because like that. Which part? Like, just the fact that you divide by 2 of the 3 by x, and just... Well, basically what we're doing, like, I wrote it this way, but since it's squared, I could have just written it instead of as x in two places. If we just wrote it as x times x, that's really what right. x squared it. And then if we just show it spread out, you know. I guess, yeah. Yeah. So technically, I suppose if I'm going to leave it this way, I should put a dot in the middle, right? Well, x so times there's x. Ten, right? just like, usually I think about dividing everything by and it's it's okay to do it this way in this case because everything in the numerator is multiplied. If it had any kind of like adding or subtracting, we couldn't do it this way. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad you're thinking about that. Okay. Um, a lot of the rest of the ones on that sheet are various versions of factoring. So, 
your homework tonight is going to come out of the book. And, and so we'll grab that in a second. I am, I also took pictures and we'll post it if you don't want to worry about doing that. But uh, anyway, a lot of these are, are just various, like I said, versions of factoring. So um, my point in saying that is maybe I'll give you a start out of the book problems, except unless you want to do all these. I can post the key for it too, like for your own extra practice. Um, how about what is cosine of x as x goes to pi? Let's just talk about that. Talk about that. One. Yeah. Um, since last week, you guys kind of mentioned trying to remember your pi ones. Uh, how about this? Is kind of small. How about limit of sine of 4x as x approaches pi over 8? Yeah, because remember that's straight up. Okay, so I just wanted to review those. How are you guys doing on factoring? Is it okay? Yeah. And I think it, I think this one is like this. Oh, let's talk about notation real quick. If you're rewriting the problem, it's good form to rewrite the limit part. So, like, for example, let's just do this one. Uh, x plus 8 and x minus 2. Since I'm just rewriting the entire problem, I want to continue to write that limit part out front. Once we start substituting values, then we can drop that. Uh, but how about these kind, where it's x minus 2 versus 2 minus x? Are you good on seeing the negative 1? Yeah. Okay. So since I'm still uh, rewriting just simplified version, it's, it's still going to be that. Okay, then it's okay to say equals negative and then 2 plus 8 over 1, which is negative 10. Okay? So I guess just a caution, kind of when you get to this level, it's okay to start saying things are equal, but make sure that they are. If I just did this equals negative 2 plus 8 over 1, that's not true. Because the limit, like, if I hadn't written this out front, or even down here, if I hadn't written this out front and strung all of those equals together, that would not be true. So be careful with that. I do feel like they would take points off for that. Okay. All right. Um, did you guys, let's, let me have you do the test prep questions right now. And they're usually not as involved. Then we'll check them and then I'll give you the... There's a trig property that I forgot for the sign x. Okay. And then place Alright, so this one, natural log of 1. This is okay to just plug in because it's yeah. not indeterminate. So talking about this one, if we factor out that code that sine of x, oh, I guess it's cosine. Yeah. Then we can do that same thing with the yeah. the two x's. Cosine x equals zero. Right. This yeah, this one yeah, is zero. zero. The sine is one. And this one is one. So still zero, yep. Yeah. Okay, next one. <coughs> um, just lots of factoring. Yeah. Sorry, that's that's minus. Simplify. Um, so a minus a zero. zero. 
Okay. All right, next one. So this is what you were talking about a second ago, uh, where you have to keep, you can't split right. that denominator the way you want. So 3x squared over 2x, and then let's split it to this numerator, also over 2x. Not that, it, not that we're looking to apply that exactly anyway, but it is kind of what you were saying earlier. Okay, and then up here, factor out the 5. I'm going to go ahead and simplify this too. Okay, so we can see five halves could come out front, and then we have our, our yeah. usual that thing. Yeah. Right? Ah, seriously. It's zoomed mode. So three halves and x goes to 0. So 0. Okay. Definitely just lots of manipulation, but it does take some practice to see when to apply these properties. And I guess, I think I'll make a little handout for you about, because you had mentioned it, you thinking on um, two, thinking yeah. it was a trig property you forgot. There really aren't very many trig properties that we'll use in calculus. So I'll give you a little handout on, actually let me make a note of that. So these are the ones I'll do out of there. I, I don't know if you want to take a picture of his, or I can post like a partial post with because I already have them uploaded. It, you'll let me know in a second. But seventy is it's a word problem, like an application problem, and I'm just curious how that goes for you because we haven't directly talked about this one has to do with um, speed and freefall. So speed, just keep in mind, it's distance divided by time, right? Like that's the units of speed. So I think that one is meters, meters per second, I think. Um, anyway, and it goes back to the idea, just as a visual cue, let's say we have this, remember, to, if we want to know <clears throat> at 5, at time at t equals 5, if we want to know the rate, the speed, it goes back to knowing that that's the slope. <clears throat> of geez, <clears throat> the slope of the position curve at that point, but how do we find the instantaneous rate at, at a point? You guys remember? Without an equation for the, if we have an equation, which actually you do have in that one. with or without an equation, remember we're finding the limit of the slope as we bring the two values closer to 5. Right. So think about the secant line from here to here, secant line from there to there, it starts approximating it better. As we bring, as x approaches 5, it's the idea of the limit of that slope, right? So I guess the biggest thing to remind you of is the slope being why it's, this is the very simple form. In calculus, it's more like this. This is called the difference quotient, and h representing the change between the two, but really as x approaches that value. So that's something that we have not done in 10 days or so, and also in context. So just give it your best shot.